Okay, in this video, we talk about control volume energy conservation analysis. Let's first revisit the energy balance equation of a system in general. The conservation of a system's energy is like this. We consider the change of a system's energy. That change is equal to the difference between the energy that goes into the system and the energy that comes out of the system. And there can be various forms of energy transfer across the boundary of the system. And also, we, we should also know uh, the energy of the system itself includes internal energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Now, let's switch to the energy balance for a control volume or control volumes. The general energy balance equation still applies. However, we need to know what the energy transfer um, forms are that's associated with a uh, with, a, with a, a control volume, especially uh, the energy transfer that's due to mass entering and leaving a control volume. Let's compare the um, energy balance equations. For a closed system, it is the first equation that's boxed in the blue box. The change in the system's energy, internal energy, potential energy, and the kinetic energy all combined is equal to the difference between these two terms, Q in and the W in minus Q out and W out. That's uh, heat transfer and the moving boundary work for a closed system. Okay, for an open system, it is still the uh, the energy change of uh, the uh, the system. Now the box moved to the this equation for the control volume. Uh, the energy change of the control volume, still internal energy, potential energy, and kin kinetic energy combined for the system is equal to the uh, these two terms in parentheses, Q in W in plus E mass in minus Q out, what, uh, W out and E mass out. Uh, the subscript C CV stands for control volume. The difference here, comparing the two equations, is for the control volume, we have a E mass term. Now let's do a comparison using this uh, this table. Uh, for closed system and the control volume or open system, uh, heat work are both there. Uh, both heat and work are possible for both types of systems. However, the form of energy transfer due to mass flowing across the, a system boundary is only possible when you have a control volume or open system. This type of uh, energy transfer is not possible for a closed system. It's not there for a uh, closed system. So here I want to focus, I want to highlight this flow work. Look at the uh, the bottom right corner of the of the table. F what What is flow work? Flow work is this. Imagine you have a, uh, a control volume, uh, like drawn, let's uh, draw here. Uh, this bulky part is the uh, control volume. And uh, think of a parcel of fluid that's entering the control volume. It pushes away into the control volume. Now, certainly it's because the fluid behind it that's pushing it into the control volume. And uh, this parcel of fluid pushes away into the control volume. You have force F, you have uh, the, uh, uh, the distance that's traveled by the fluid, a very small distance traveled by the fluid, and that is work, force times distance, that's work. So this results in work done under the control volume by the flowing fluid entering the control volume. And so this is the expression of the work done. And we can normalize that work onto per unit mass of flowing fluid. So that's flow work. Flow work is equal to the work done by the parcel of a uh, flowing fluid entering the control volume divided by, its, by, divided by its mass. And as a result, the flow work per unit mass of flowing fluid is the product of uh, pressure and the specific volume. So that's flow work, P, V, V lowercase. Now the physical meaning of flow work is that it, it accompanies the flowing fluid and is always received on the downstream side of the boundary. So therefore, when the flowing fluid brings, uh, the flowing fluid would bring uh, in flow work when it enters a control volume. 
And when the flowing fluid leaves the control volume, it actually takes away the flow work out of the control volume. It is also called a flow energy because it's part of the energy that is associated with a flowing fluid. Now, let's think of uh, the uh, energy transport by mass, that is flowing fluid entering or leaving a control volume. The energy that's associated with a flowing fluid uh, about a control volume uh, includes these things. It's the um, internal energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, plus flow work. Okay, now we know you can combine U and uh, PV, uh, this first term U and the last term V, uh, to become enthalpy. Now, that's by definition, we learned that before, enthalpy is defined as in, uh, U plus PV. So we can write the, uh, the, the theta, this energy per unit mass um, that's carried by flowing, flu uh, flowing fluid as H plus PE plus KE. So the energy associated with a flowing fluid entering or leaving a control volume is its enthalpy and its potential energy and its, kin its kinetic energy. Three things. Okay, now again, we can think of the uh, energy transfer by mass um, in different uh, perspectives. Now, the extensive energy uh, that's carried by a uh, flowing fluid entering a control volume, uh, if you know the mass of a uh, flowing fluid entering the uh, control volume, then it's m times theta. If you think of the, the time rate of uh, energy transport by mass, then you need to know the mass flow rate of uh, the ma of the uh, the flowing fluid. That would be over uh, m over dot times theta. Theta being the, the 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 energy carried by the flowing fluid on a per unit mass basis. Okay, and then you can expand that to show that uh, theta is actually equal to uh, enthalpy and uh, kinetic energy and potential energy. So now we can complete the energy balance equation for a control volume. Now first, think of the um, energy uh, change of a system. Uh, I have two equations here. The top equation is the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the general equation. Uh, you have uh, the change of a system's energy, which is equal to uh, E in minus E out. If you take the uh, uh, derivative, time derivative of uh, on both sides of the equation, you have uh, uh, the time derivative form, which is the second equation. The second equation can be expanded into this long equation. This long equation is this. Basically, I expand the E over dot in and E over dot out. E over dot uh, uh, in is equal to uh, the heat transfer in uh, work done onto the control volume. That's through uh, shaft work and the sum of uh, uh, energy transport terms into the control volume due to various streams of uh, flowing fluid into a control volume. Now, likewise, the uh, E over dot out of the control volume uh, has uh, all these terms except the direction of uh, the energy transfer is different. It's out of the control volume. You count all those terms. The, the subscript i and j represent the individual inlets and outlets. Now, in our course, in this course, in most cases, we only have one inlet and one outlet. So in the sigma, uh, in the sum uh, term, uh, there's only one item, either in or out. Okay, we also know in considering uh, energy conservation of a control volume, we also need to consider mass balance. I have a separate uh, video uh, in this uh, uh, playlist that uh, considers mass balance, mass conservation of a control volume. I'm not going to elaborate here. Okay, so the um, energy balance of a steady flow processes, that's a special form of a special type of uh, energy conservation situation about a control volume. That's when you have a steady flow process. The equations that I introduced uh, prior to this slide apply to general uh, situations, whether you have a steady flow process or a transient, unsteady flow process. So in a steady flow process, 
uh, the um, uh, the properties within a control volume uh, or the the extensive and intensive properties within the control volume don't change with time, uh, even though they may uh, vary with location. That's generally the case. The 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 properties do vary uh, from one point to another point within the control volume. Um, so the uh, the mass, the internal, the, the energy inside a control volume and the volume of a control volume are all constants in the steady flow process. So as a result, we have this equation. This um, these two equations. These two equations are necessary for a analysis of a con energy conservation analysis of a control volume. The first equation is about energy. The second equation is about mass. And that's because in the control volume, uh, these things, uh, the 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 uh, the mass, the uh, energy within the control volume don't change with time. Okay, in the steady flow pr uh, process, uh, the um, energy conservation equation uh, is like this. One thing I I would like to highlight is that the, the work in the steady flow process is only shaft work. It's not the moving boundary work because in a steady flow process, the volume of the control volume does not change, so that uh, the moving boundary work has to be zero. Okay, now let's focus on this one inlet, one outlet steady flow process, uh, which is the case for almost all of the problems that uh, you will encounter in this introductory thermodynamics course. Okay, the energy balance equation is like this. Now this is rearranged from the previous equations. And then the previous equations, uh, in the previous uh, forms of the equation, I have shown you uh, what's going into the control volume must be equal to uh, what's coming, what's going out of the control volume for a steady flow process. Okay. Now I have rearranged uh, that equation so that the, the terms in and out appear on both sides of the equation. This is uh, to uh, uh, focus on. Uh, this is uh, basically separate. Now, it's, now you see on the left hand side of the equation uh, is the the heat transfer form, uh, and is the uh, the work shaft work uh, uh, items of energy transfer. On the right hand side of the equation, all these terms are uh, energy transfer uh, energy transport terms uh, related to um, mass crossing the boundary of a control volume, flowing fluid crossing the boundary of a control volume. Or equivalently, we can write this. We can write um, the, 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 the heat into a control volume minus the net work, okay, net heat into a control volume minus net work out of a control volume is equal to the, uh, the change in the energy uh, transport into the control volume and out of the control volume related to mass crossing the boundary. So delta H, delta Ke, delta P refer to the uh, the difference between the enthalpy, kinetic energy, potential energy uh, between the mass going into the uh, control volume and uh, going out of the control volume. And certainly, we also always need to consider the mass balance equation when we analyze a um, the, the steady flow uh, pro when we analyze the energy conservation of a steady flow process of a control volume.